just to uh, introduce everyone, uh, the lights lights aren't real hard, real good here. This is the um, the researcher of the year, uh, sponsored by by CSD, and uh, Stephen Yates, Dr. Jeff Baker, and Colin Tan and Sandra Williams are just coming to the stage. But we'll uh, we'll start just to introduce them with the with the short video. Most of the work I've done has been in the frontier of cotton, the tropical areas, but mainly in the cotton agronomy and farming systems area. There's more to the frontier than just growing the stuff. There's a lot of politics, land availability, getting the resources available. Mostly as a researcher you can start to lay the foundations and allow people to have enough information on what to expect from cotton and whether it's possible. Can, what you've got to do to change your production practices for these completely different growing areas. I've also done a little bit of work with a team. You don't do any of this work on your own, of course. And uh, how best to schedule irrigation for the new Bulgar varieties, which grew a bit differently to the older varieties. It basically enabled growers to quickly establish how to water and get the best result for the litre of water they applied. I guess I've been lucky being in the industry for 20 years I have. I'd like some things not to change, and that's that it stays pretty visionary. I'd also like to think that we've got a new generation of farmers and researchers coming through. Uh, that's a great concern to me. Colin and I have worked together for 15 years. Our research has focused particularly on Helicoverpa, the two species, the moths that are major problems that have been for a long time in cotton. Understanding that basic biology of the pest and in particular we focus on work trying to prevent Bt resistance emerging on the landscape. And Jeff and I have been working very closely together, certainly focusing on refuges so we've got sustainability in the future. If you stand back and you've got a database that goes for 20 to 30 years, you set up something where it's an ongoing evolution of ideas and new topics and questions that need to be answered, but you create a continuity through it. You can see how the industry is moving, see how the insects have moved, so you work hard at trying to do that. This information is published, of course, but it's also discussed through TIMS and then it goes out there to the industry. We're both on the TIMS and BT tech panel. Because if it's not published and it's not out in the, in the wild, then it's questionable whether it was worth doing in the first place. You know, I think we've got on very well as a team. My key areas of research and extension over the last 20 years has been focused on validating best management practices in the industry like insect sampling techniques, insect thresholds, pest thresholds, picks management strategies, crop monitoring techniques. I get to do the research and it's applied. You can see it being used in the industry. I don't just sit in a laboratory. Like I love going to CCA seminars, talking about my trials and getting questions and actually helping people understand what's going on. I equally like going out and talking to the growers as well as the consultants about the different results coming out of my very applied research. With the extension side of things, my role has been being in some really fantastic teams to develop the industry publications that we have, like the Cotton Pest Management Guide, and also our computerised decision support systems like our Cottasys website. I guess the main focus of the research has been in the development of decision support tools to assist the consultants and growers. If I wasn't in a job that was making a difference, I, I, would, I would find a different job. Special thanks, thanks to all the sponsors for these awards because if we don't have the sponsors, um, it's pretty hard to put all these awards together. So thanks very much to CSD and thanks, Steve. Cheers. Um, good afternoon. Thanks, Simon. Um, good afternoon, everyone. I was told before I got up here I stand between, or well, we stand here between you and lunch, so we'll be quick. <laughs> um, I'd, 
I'd like to invite Steve Yates um, to come forward. I've, I've known Steve for about 10 years and um, I've, I've got a... It's a long time, eh? Yeah. Um, and I've, I've um, just got a couple of questions for you, Steve, and we'll have a, we'll have a crack at them. Cool. Adoption of technology and extension in research has been, when I think about your contribution to industry over time, has, has been typified by that. What, what, um, what do you think typifies the highest success you've had in the extension and the adoption of those things? Um, I guess I'll answer part of that first. I'll, I'll go a little way, another way a bit with that answer that we don't always succeed in that area and I'd say that to any young scientists. Not everything you do ends up in adoption. That's part of the way science works or research works. It doesn't always succeed. When you have successes, it's based on, I believe, planning for adoption and having that as your focus. And really important is knowing you're answering the right question and the partnerships with industry and other people you never do alone are really critical to having those parts of the puzzle together. And there's also a little bit of luck. Uh, I've had a very good project years ago that wasn't in cotton. We did a magnificent job and we got a bit unlucky with a change in the market and it never came to fruition. So there's all those things, yeah. Um, I have another question here. Anyone who, <laughs> any, anyone who knows you knows you're a very passionate, enthusiastic, infectious sort of guy, very committed to what you do. Could, could you share, um, I guess, how, what sort of techniques, tools you've used in extension and communication with growers to be able to sort of transfer the, the knowledge which you've developed over the years? Um, probably a little bit lucky early in my career with some good mentors and not starting in a pure research job helped. I did a lot of extension development work and worked in private sector early on and learned a lot of things there. And it made me focus on that communication side of the game um, a lot more. The other thing is to actively build that in and continually improve. You, you never sit in one place with that side of things. You're always trying new things and you build it into your research project and the way you function. Uh, I, that's pretty important. We continually change. And the other thing is, again, you learn from your mistakes. Um, that's really important. Very good. Thanks very much, Steve. Um, I'd, I'd just like to welcome Colin Tan and Dr Jeff Baker to come up and say a couple of words, answer a couple of questions between them. Maybe come together, yeah? Team? <laughs> um, so, I, I guess I've, maybe we'll have a question each, hey? that might be easiest. What, what, um, so, Jeff, what, what would be the major highlight, I think, of your, your work over, your, over the career uh, with CSIRO and, and Colin? Um, I, I, as was mentioned in the, in the footage up there, you saw uh, we've monitored these populations of insects for 20 plus years. That's kind of unusual in insect ecology and it's a glorious opportunity to then look back and see how things have tracked. Uh, and you can, you can see how um, the advent of BT cotton uh, has, has impacted on these insects. Uh, I haven't got time to go into that in, in detail, but simply we are now seeing that that BT cotton is having suppressive effects on the insects across the landscape. There aren't as many as there used to be, and we can put that down to BT cotton. The other thing I'd highlight would be our work just underpinning the science behind the, the resistance management plan as we revisit it uh, with Bolgard 3 coming around the corner. We've had inputs on to the refuge uh, side of things especially, and uh, how um, refuges have not only produced the, the insects but are, are dis, uh, dispersing them, or they are dispersing away, whether, and the weakness and the strength in, in that. And finally, um, there are other things in the RMP that we've had underpinning. The one I really enjoyed was, was working with Monsanto in a joint way. We brought our big data sets in insects. They brought the big data sets on the planting windows that you've uh, uh, all... Uh, had to abide by and putting those two data sets together and being able then to make implications for the industry as to where we can relax and you know, where we shouldn't. Excellent. Thanks, Jeff. All right, Colin. Um, this, I guess one putting it, this is, this is for everyone's um, understanding, this is the first time we've actually had a, a team nominated uh, for the CSD Research Award, um, which in itself I think is quite a, 
quite a great thing, and I, I really um, appreciate the uh, nominations that we've ha we've had for this. Colin, you're, you're the other ha you're the other half of the team, um, and half of the team I know is going fishing or skiing in Canberra. Um, yeah. Maybe what what um, in the future? What how do you think the future will unroll now with with the you know the plans for the future in that area of research? Thanks, Steve. Um, well. Old scientists never never stop. Um, um, Jeff's taken up a, an honorary position with CSIRO, so he, he shed all that administrative crap that he has to put up with and, and the senior management roles he's had. So now he's got time to do his research and, um, and he's as busy as ever. So he retired, he retired last November, but still busy. Um, so we continue as a team, probably for the next... 12 months or so, um, and probably extend out further as an advisory thing. So, um, so Jeff and I um, have worked very closely together for the last 15 years, and um, and we each have a part of, of the projects we we attend to. Um, the future, um, well, I'm going to continue um, ecology of Helicoverpa, and um, and probably move into um, uh, exploring some of these new molecular tools. Um, addressing some of the um, many unanswered questions we have with um, um, Helicoverpa punctigera um, and exploring the ecology more and, um, and how it relates to resistance uh, evolution in time. So we're, we're looking at some exciting work there in the future. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Colin. Come on, Sandra. <coughs> so, that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Sandra Williams. Sandra, I've got, surprisingly, I have two questions for you too. Um, and I, the, the first one, I think, is relatively straightforward. So, 20 years of technology, it's about as old as I feel. Um, so, what's the, um, probably been the biggest sort of thing in your mind over that time in your career that, that's had an impact in the industry? You might know this. Yes. <laughs> I know this. Um, I'd just like to say, as you can see by the video, I've really enjoyed the roles that I've had to um, play over the last 20 years. Um, okay, look, so the, the uh, moments in my career have probably not been redefining for the industry, but I have had a couple of proud moments that I will share with you. Um, I guess the first one um, back in 2011 where I uh, led the... Um, the uh, um, revisal of the cotton pest and beneficial um, guide in Australian cotton landscapes. Um, so I, I felt that was a very a big collaborative effort. Um, very proud of the how the handbook um, turned out, how it looked. Um, we even incorporated a section on um, landscapes and how native veg can play a role in pest management. So that was a first in an industry publication. Um, and I th I'm pretty proud to say that it probably is a handbook that's a must-have for bug checkers and consultants. The other proud moment that I think I'll share with you, um, I guess it's not so much a proud moment, but it's, a, it's a something that we've been working on for quite some many years is the Cotasys tools. We've got 12 um, um, very good tools based on sound science. They're ready to help um, cotton managers with... Um, they're tricky decisions that they have to make on a daily basis um, and very proud of them. Once again, a big collaborative effort um, and my role within that is basically to be the interpreter between the scientists and the, the software developer to try to create something that's actually useful. So it's been um, quite a challenging role. Very good, thanks. <laughs> um, and I guess the, the final question I, I, I had and this is one took, took a bit of thinking but when I sort of think about Sandra and when I talk to people who know Sandra, one of the words that pops to mind is that you've been a very good mentor to people um, and it seems to play a large role in the things that you do and the things that you've done. Um, yeah, how, how would you like that to develop and how would you like that part of your role to develop going forward? Thanks for that good question. Um, of a fairly new role of mine is a team leader with CSR Agriculture, so I do believe that mentoring is going to play a larger part for me in the future. To me, I believe that good mentoring, like for me anyway, is about four key things. So the first one being about infecting people 
with um, not diseases but enthusiasm. And to do that, I, I truly believe seeing the results of your research out there creates that enthusiasm. And that's what I've had over the years. And so I want to infect people with that. Second one being, um, so respecting others, respecting that they've all got different goals and values in life. I think that's very important as a mentor. Um, being a really good example when it comes to worth ethics is a really um, a crucial one. And um, last but not least, effective, honest, open communication. And one thing that um, I would like to say is that um, I, th I, I truly believe that picking up the phone and speaking to someone instead of flicking an email every now and then is a really good habit to get into. Um, and it doesn't mean that you have to be a great speaker, but just so long as you're doing it. Very good. Thank, thanks, Sandra. Thanks, everyone. Thanks very much, Dave.